podcast, live edition, street edition. Who knows what's going to happen tonight? Anything can happen. I do have a subject I could talk about, random subject, because why not? But uh, really, at the end of the day, going to be uh, discussing uh, why women need camaraderie and not compatibility, because why the hell not? And I'm sure I'll be approached, and we'll probably do some uh, typing random people as uh, people decide to uh, show up and be part of the show. So we're broadcasting live on uh, YouTube this evening. So yeah, welcome. Welcome to the show. And, uh, oh, very interesting. What's up, FT? I haven't seen you in a long time. Thanks for uh, sticking around. One of my more... Uh, Older uh, subscribers. I see you're still around. Live lecture, let's go, yeah. Let's go. So yeah, for those of you who are uh, not aware, women uh, prefer uh, cognitive asynchronicity instead of uh, cognitive uh, synchronicity. I think it's season five, part two, where we talk about asynchronicity, but it might actually have its own season. Just having a hard time remembering the, uh, the specific season number, basically, and, uh, you know, fair warning, I'm actually kind of fried right now, so kind of a little bit low on electrolytes, but uh, don't want to lose my uh, fingers in the process, because uh, <laughs> I uh, sometimes, uh, oxalates like to gather up in my fingers sometimes, so I got to supplement with magnesium to get rid of them, so yeah, a lot of people don't realize it's how you get, like, gout, for example, but... Uh, yeah. Anyway, so why do women need camaraderie instead of compatibility? Like, what's, what's the freaking point of it, you know? A lot of people don't understand that, like, women in general, because they have female judgment and they have female perception, right? And uh, I, I, don't, I don't care if people say I'm fake. I mean, you guys could probably watch me psychoanalyze people's life. It's only a matter of time before someone comes up and it's like, oh, hey, you know, it's C.S. Joseph. He's, he's coming up, you know. Let me be on his show. I want to be on your show. I want to be on your show. And I'm just like, yo, I'm a mind reader. And they're like, okay. And then, boom, right on the show. So I expect to be interrupted. That's a thing. They'll just come up eventually. Hey, what are you doing? You know, and as the interruptions come in, we'll do typing random people and then switch back to... Uh, the lecture content because why not be chaotic why not be a starter type right also I'd like to dedicate this stream to our new uh, do I tell people I sometimes I tell them sometimes I don't yeah sometimes I just like do they really need to know oftentimes people have this negative reaction like oh that's just Myers Briggs and I'm like well I'm using the letters because it's easy to search on YouTube, you know what I'm saying? That's what it comes down to, so yeah. Anyway, so, why do, why do uh, women need camaraderie not, and compatibility? It really comes down to masculine and feminine relationships, right? Because women in general, they don't really know this, but they really only have room, only have room for one compatible relationship in their life and that is basically their relationship with their man they really only have room for that and why is that so what is camaraderie what is compatibility let's actually break that down first so camaraderie so basically for example a high camaraderie relationship is uh, for example I'm an ENTP so that would be me being in a relationship with fellow crusader types, right? Like an ISFJ or an ESFJ or an INTP. But the thing is, is that that's not really good for men. Men are constantly looking for compatible relationships. So I'm an ENTP. Compatible relationships would be INTJ, ISFP, ENTJ, for example, right? We talk a lot about this in the Golden Pair Lectures. We talk about this in Season 5 where we talk about cognitive synchronicity, basically. So yeah, but basically compatibility is 
the cognitive functions are lining up really well with other people's functions. So for example, in the golden pair, my golden pair is an INTJ. They are all about like a golden pair woman, INTJ woman, if I, if I was with an INTJ woman, she's all about what she wants, but I'm all about what she wants because her NI hero matches up perfectly with my expert intuition hero. And then I know what I think, constantly just telling the truth, even to the point of being critical, but I do that because I care. Introverted thinking parent. If she has extroverted thinking parent, she's all about what I think, right? So it works out perfectly. She's all about how she feels. I'm all about how everyone else feels and making people feel better, so I make her feel better. So it lines up perfectly. She has extroverted sensing inferior, afraid of me, afraid of making me uncomfortable. And then I have introverted sensing inferior, which is I'm afraid of being uncomfortable. So it just kind of lines up. Our ego functions line up and they're there to take care of each other. This is what compatibility is. And men are constantly seeking compatibility in their life. Constantly seeking compatibility all the time. The reason why is, is because <laughs> unconditional love, right? Men don't really experience unconditional love in their life because love from a woman is very conditional, except for potentially the relationship a mother has with a son. That's typically seen as unconditional. However, in today's day and age, because we enable female solipsism, which is their propensity to put self above tribe, and they're supposed to learn about tribe above self when they give birth, when they become mothers, right? Where they learn idealism and they're supposed to be idealistic towards their children. However, in this day and age, that doesn't happen very much because, well, for example, abortion, right? Mothers end up basically killing their own children all the time for whatever reason, a myriad of reasons, right? And oftentimes because society enables female solipsism as much as it does, right? Men end up having this issue where they don't actually, a lot of men who, and most men walk in quiet desperation, right? Because men walk in quiet desperation, it's mostly because they've never really experienced unconditional love. And this is why men typically have the majority of their relationships from a perspective of compatibility. Because men like our egos enabled instead of disabled, right? So that's like the male version. That's like uh, what happens for men. That's what they get out of it. So a lot of their male friends is based on compatibility. A lot of their, and almost all of their relationships, I would say nine out of 10 of their relationships with women are based on compatibility. They want to be with compatible women, right? That's what men are getting out of it. Yes, Miss Kia, this is live. So. That's a big deal. That's what it's all about, entirely about. Women are a little bit different. Women, you know, their love is oftentimes conditional because men have to develop value. Men are not born with value, but women are born with value. They're born with, uh, you know, they, they have the eggs, for example. They are the arbiters that choose sexual selection, natural selection. Uh, basically happens when a man or when a woman chooses a man because if you give multiple men to a woman her sexual strategy of hypergamy will select or choose that man but if you give multiple women to a man he will play basically and those women are effectively compatible with him compatible relations at least sexually compatible right and that's why we have the eight sexually compatible relationships which is golden pair silver pair bronze pair uh, pedagogue relationship. Bronze pair is also known as the natural. You hear me talk about the natural all the time. And uh, in my opinion, I think it's wise for men to get into golden pairs and natural pairs the most, more than any other pair, right? If you want to learn more about that, uh, get yourself access to the Discover the 16 Types, uh, which talks about golden pairs, season 14, part one. And that's available uh, at csjoseph.life forward slash portal. Just find Discover the 16. Click uh, Don't Have Access button. It'll take you right to the sales page so you can get it. It's only 87 bucks, And uh, it gives you access to those private videos.
including uh, season 19, the prequel to uh, Ego Hacking Your Fear. So, so because men don't really have unconditional love in their lives, they prefer to seek out compatible relationships with women and men simultaneously. However, women do it a lot different. Women prefer camaraderie. Why is this? The reason why, and I'm oftentimes told that I'm very sexist when I say this, but this is actually biology, this is psychology, this is the truth, but it really comes down to the difference between judgment and perception from a Jungian analytical psychology perspective, right? So, women have, you know, they, they call it uh, female intuition, right? Female intuition, female perception, right? The feminine intuition, the feminine uh, mystique, basically. So, females, women, have better perception than men. This is why like, men are often seen by women as entirely oblivious. And it's true, men are oblivious. To the point where we don't even know if we have like, you know, dirt underneath our fingernails, but women are always aware of that because of female perception, right? They're able to pick up on those things, they're able to pick up on body language, they're able to take in a lot more information from a perceptive capability. Women see more. This is why an expert intuition hero on, for example, an ENTP woman or an ENFP woman, basically, is actually far superior to that of an expert intuition hero on a man. It is far superior. So their perception functions are superior to male perception functions. The thing is, though, is that where I start getting labeled sexist is when I start talking about female judgment. Women lack the ability because to judge properly, to make decisions properly because they have impaired judgment because they're women. Their brains cannot use their judgment functions as effectively as men can. And that can be a problem. But you tell that to a woman. In fact, I told this to an ESTP woman that was on Typing Random People recently. And she had a cow on the show. She like lost her mind, entirely lost her mind. Where it's like, oh my God, what are you saying? Oh my God, you're so sexist, you're a, you're a sad human, she'd tell me. I'm like, yeah, but within this conversation that I just had with you, literally just now, you proved that I was correct. Because she told me she was becoming an RN. She told me she was becoming a nurse, this ESTP woman, right? So, Based on that, oh, extroverted intuition is the uh, collective unconscious, by the way, according to Carl Jung. So, extroverted intuition, perception functions, any, any perception, like even an SE hero woman is going to be far superior to an extroverted sensing hero man. They just pick up on far more information. But again, their judgment is impaired. So this ESTP girl, I'm like, oh, that's really cool that you're being a, an RN. I think you'll do great. And she's like, is it, is it really cool? Is it really good? She's questioning it, questioning whether or not her being a registered nurse was actually a good decision for her. And she was looking for some extroverted thinking input from me to basically enable that decision from her because women have inferior judgment than men, but they have superior perception, right? Superior perception. That's what men bring to the table. Men bring decision-making power but women bring perception power. And it's very hard for most women to actually accept that as a biological truth because it is a biological truth. This is one of the reasons why women travel in packs, for example, and men are often alone. Because men just, we make decisions, you know? This is why women have stitch and bitch sessions because when women get together, they talk, versus men, when they get together, they do. Men don't do stitch and bitch. What's up? Have I seen you on YouTube? Maybe. Maybe. Is that real star? Yeah. Uh, I was wondering, I walked by, I saw you here, I was wondering what's up. Yeah. Oh, good night, sir. What are you talking about? Psychology. Oh, psychology? Yes, sir. So what would you say I'm doing to you right now? Having a conversation. Okay. 
<laughs> well, I'm a good guy. Are you? Well, I donate half my money to charity, and if she's not working, I give it to Destiny. Yeah. yeah you want me to read your mind? Yes, in front sir. of my audience? Yeah. All right, let's put on a microphone. All right. What's your name? Dougie Fresh. Here you go. Just uh, so thumb here. Yeah, on your lapel. Yeah. No. Dope. Dope. Check, check, Introduce Wilford, yourself check. to the audience right now, sir. I'm Dougie Fresh. Dougie Fresh. What do you do for a living? Uh, concrete. I'm a concrete finisher. You concrete. 25 years. 25 years. How long have you been? So, so what got you into concrete? Uh, single dad with three kids. I needed to make good money, support them. I'm a single dad too. I get it. Yeah, but they're all grown. I'm, I'm with my baby right now. She's 26. Part of the bachelorette party? Oh, she's 30, sorry. No. Oh, 30. Oh, no, okay. no, it's uh, just ha she having oysters down the street. Having what? Oysters. Oh, yeah, Down oysters, at crickets. Huh? Oh, okay, yeah, they do have good Try oysters down there. Trying to get myself in the mood tonight. Getting in the mood, just yeah. Just kidding. All right, cool. Never so, not be in okay, the mood. Okay, talk to me, talk to me. Yeah, this. yeah, so... So yeah, so you're you're Mr. Concrete, been doing concrete for 25 years, yeah. So, all right, so I'll, I'll just expose your soul to the audience. It'll okay. be fun. Yeah. So you're all about what everyone else wants all the time. You're aware of options and choices. You work hard to give people choices. You don't really necessarily take people's freedom away. You always got your mind on the future all the time. Wait, what? This is what this guy's getting out of the situation compared to what this guy's getting out of the situation. Hey, we could probably make something work. You know what I'm saying? Because you're able to see the consequences of what's going to happen ahead of time. I always think ahead. Always thinking ahead. Always. But you know exactly how you feel, and you know exactly what you value on a regular basis every time. You're very responsible. I'm for that. Uh, no, sir. Okay, I can't sorry. do that. I don't really know you. My okay. bad. My bad. It just I've never sucked on an expensive cigar, and that looks like a Cuban. Oh uh, no, it's a. Uh, well, maybe. It, it, La Roma de Cuba. Oh, okay. But I don't think it's made in Cuba. I apologize. I interrupted you. Oh, yes. no. It's all good, man. Okay. You're always trying to do the right thing. That's what makes you so awesome. Yeah. I always mean. doing the right thing. All the time. Very moral individual. Such that people think highly of you because they see that you go out of your way to be a good person whenever possible. Despite the fact that you may have an anger problem and hey. you get pretty wrathful sometimes. Hey. But you still Stop go out of your it. way to be a That's good a person. Concrete. That's a concrete guy in me. The concrete guy in you? Well, it could be the father, too. I had three yeah, girls, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, Keep those boys away. Yes, sir. Yeah. To this day. Yep. I mean, two of them are married, but still, I'll always be in the picture. As you know, yeah. if you're a father. Yeah. Are you I'm, a father? I'm a father so of three. You, you feel? I get it. Yeah. I hell, I identify with that. Yes, sir. So you are aware of what everyone is thinking all the time. You're aware of who's the smart person in the room and who's the dumb people in the room. You like to be around the smart people because then you're able to extract their smarts and become more intelligent yourself, uh, which is pretty awesome. Gives you a not. very strong opinion. Hold on. He was wrong on that part, but just we'll kidding. see. We'll see. Just kidding. I, I do. I mean, obviously, we always got to look for those people, but I get along with everyone. You know what? And awesome. if, you got, if you got mental issues or anything, I'm there with you, buddy. I don't judge. We all I appreciate issues. that very much. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you're all about what people want. You're all about what you feel, what you value. Very responsible with uh, you know what you value. But you see other people being really irresponsible with their values and their principles. So you tend to criticize other people's value systems because like, hey, that's not a good person. That's a person of low character. You probably don't want to be around that person. So you provide warning to other people to stay away from bad people, to stay away from corrupt people so that they don't become like them, so that they don't become corrupt as well. Because you're constantly aware of what could happen in that moment, which yeah. is pretty awesome. Or we've been there. Yeah. We've experienced it. We know what happens when you tell the boss to fuck off. You're done. No money in. Your family's starving. Yeah, that's the consequence. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But. but your fear, you are afraid of being weak. So you go out of your way to overcompensate for that fear and aspire. So you end up becoming the strongest person in the room over time. To the point where there are times in your life where you're, all, you're the guy putting in the most work. You're yeah. the guy putting well, in the most I am effort. the foreman. Hell so yeah. you might have got one thing right. Hey, hey. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yes, you know, I, that's just normal good people, man. This is Coeur d'Alene. Yeah, it's Coeur d'Alene, bro. take you down to L.A. and then you get come out with this. Oh. I don't know, man. I, were, you, were you raised here, born here? No, no, no. I'm from, uh, I'm from the San Juan Islands. Okay. Yeah. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Tropical. No, no, no. It's just south of the Canadian border. Very cold. Cool. Winter is great, you know? I got my daughter in here. I yes, haven't seen her in 30 days, so. 
Yeah, it's good that I you're being it. a good father doing that. I gotta cut out of here. I apologize for interrupting. Oh, this. no, you can interrupt. I saw you out here. I'm like, this guy looks interesting. She goes, Dad, go talk to him. Yeah, so, bring her out here. I'll read her mind too, and I'll actually tell you, uh, tell her relationship you know with what? you. You're gonna say the same thing. No, oh, I won't. oh, our relationship. Oh, yeah, hold yeah. On. I might have to record this one. All right, cool, have man. A good night, sir. See you around. Yes, sir. LOL, drunk people. Someone uh, remind me uh, where I left off before I uh, talked uh, to that ENFP. Someone remind me where I left off. That's one thing. Yeah, well, he's got XC, he's got expert sensing demon. Don't judge that guy. Seriously. Don't judge that guy, guys. Like, he's got expert sensing uh, demon. And he's a starter type, so he's going to initiate. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So. Oh, yeah. Women, yeah, women do have impaired judgment. This is why women travel in packs, right? The reason why is because they're trying to emulate uh, male judgment. They, they do stitch and bitch. They always want to, you know, whenever they're talking to a guy, they always want all their friends to confirm whether or not, you know, that guy is, is good for them or not. But men don't really do that because men have a tendency of relying on their own judgment. Judgment, you know, compared to uh, compared to other people or compared to women who don't, they oftentimes rely on each other and be like, "Hey, I need some additional confirmation," because women's judgment is basically inferior compared to male judgment. It's oftentimes why men end up in relationships with lower quality women than they should, because you know, as 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 Chris Taylor has uh, thrown me under the bus many times for, "Hey, man." Why don't you at least like go out of your way to ask some of the people in your life their opinion of these girls before you actually get with these girls? And it's like, okay, yeah, that's a, that's a fair point. Because oftentimes I end up relying on my own understanding and that's ultimately what men do. They rely on their own, uh, their own decisions, basically. Because men, ultimately have superior judgment to that of women, but they have inferior perception. Men don't pick up on body language, for example. Men don't pick up on all of those unseen things. So when women get with men, it's nice because you have all of the perception on the table and you have all the judgment on the table. And then that just improves over time. Hella improves. And then it actually, it's what women bring to the table, it's what men bring to the table, it's ultimately what's a great relationship. So I highly recommend it. This is why human beings are built for a relationship. This is the difference between men and women. So, so women, oftentimes, like their best friend, you'll notice, they have the same sexual functions, right? So women end up valuing emotional uh, you know, emotional relations. Now, sometimes they have emotional compatibility with women, meaning that like their, their decision-making functions will match up perfectly in their ego with fellow women, but their sexual functions are completely incompatible, right? Completely incompatible. This is entirely necessary. I mean, if you think about it, this is one of the reasons why the male sexual strategy and the female sexual strategy actually works out. Male sexual strategy being polygyny where you have many women, many women for one man. Because a girl, when she's out with her friends, a man could basically take all of her friends at the same time. This is King 5 News and I'm reporting live with this guy smoking a cigar. I can't hear you. Why not? Because the microphone's right here. Sorry. You want to be on my show? No? Oh, she'll be a show. Oh, she is a show all the time. Look at her. I already got her pegged. Oh, I'm... <laughs> As a mind reader, you want me to read her mind? We'll do it. Yeah, bring her over here. I got a microphone. Eric, come here. No. She doesn't like her freedom of choice taken away. <laughs> oh, and now the, uh, the ESTJ friend is going to try to convince her. Even though uh, she's quite, uh, she's quite drunk. Oh, don't worry, I'll get her. The thing is, is that the ESTJ is a little uncomfortable. Come on. Oh. 
They're discussing it. They're discussing it. Oh yeah, she's an ESTJ. Part of the bachelorette party. If I do one, I'm gonna get them all. How do I know we're type? Folks, I've been doing this for 15 years. Come on. What are you talking about? I've been doing this for 15 years. You don't even know what I can do. You don't even know. Hey, good morning. What are you recording? My podcast. Lots of newbies, yeah. Chase is chasing too hard. Thank you, Poncho Villa. Hey, I think you should be on my show. You. Me? Yeah, come on. The audience wants you on the show. The audience asked for you. The audience, the, the audience asked for you. Come on. We're live on YouTube right now. Come on. Let's do it as I obligate her. All right, here's your microphone. All right. So just stick it on your shirt like mine. It's all right. I'll tell you about her too. It'll be fun. So okay. uh, yeah, just stick it like right here. I'm just gonna hold it and then. All right, you have enough self-discipline. You could do it. Yeah. Cool. So I'm gonna mind read you in front of the audience. Okay. It's gonna be fun. So you're all about what everyone else thinks all the time. You're a very organized individual. You bring order to chaos. It's pretty awesome. You're very dutiful. You always do what you should always the most reliable person, always watching out for people like you're protecting your friend right now, making sure she's safe because you're a really loyal person. Uh -huh. And she needs loyal people in her life to always watch out for her. That's what you do, right? Yeah. You also give her freedom and choices and options because this girl right here, if you take away her freedom or take away her choice, she gets super ragey. She has a huge fear of missing out. She always wants someone like you to include her all the time. You know what I'm saying? But you also want to feel wanted. It's one of the most sensitive parts about you. You always want to be chosen all the time. Cancer, yeah. Yeah? <laughs> oh, that's a cancer thing, huh? Yeah. Mm, what's, what's mine? Can you guess? No one can guess. They never can. Uh, give me a hint. Mine's rare. Much rare. Pisces? No. Nope. Close, though. Oh, so your name is Madison? Yep. All right, thanks for being on the show. Okay, so you're all about people wanting you and whatnot, but your fear, you're afraid of being a bad person. You're afraid of being unworthy. You're afraid of not being good enough. I'm so sorry. However, as you get older, you learn principles, and you become like this awesome philosopher over time, and then people come to you and ask you your opinion, and you share your principles for success because you want to find that I win button in life. You know what I'm saying? It's like, hey, if I just do this procedure, I'm always gonna get the outcome I'm looking for. So you care about your comfort, you care about your safety, and that's what causes you to go out for other people's You're safety. You're speaking truth. Yeah, that's what um, I do. Yeah, I am a mind reader after all. I know. But your worry, where your worry exists, you worry that what you think might not actually be true. And that's why you're constantly asking everyone else what they think all the time. Because, hey, if they're in at least in agreement with what you already think, then you know that your beliefs are matching the truth, basically. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, you're fine. That's how it works, yeah. But you're very critical. Hi. Very critical towards your own personal performance and the performance of other people. To the point where you have a tendency to judge a book by the cover. Keep the microphone up, please. Hi. So when uh, that happens, it's like, so let's say someone's got like dirt on their shirt, or the shoes untied or whatever, they're kind of unkept you're probably not going to respect them. You're not even going to listen to them. You might even just kind of just be like, okay, yeah, I get the hell out. Because you're very critical towards other people's experience and how they come off, but you're also very critical towards how you come off in that regard too. Yep. That's why you try to go out of your way to at least perform well whenever you can. But that can, this can give you a feeling of living life backwards. Because while you're a successful out athlete in the past, when you're older, you're going to be like, oh man, I wish those, I missed those good times <laughs> when I was a really good athlete. But then you become more of a philosopher as a result. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now what you are unaware of is what you want. You don't know what you want. That's why you go out of your way to find out what other people want because you don't know what you want. And sometimes you get impulsive and you make decisions. Oh, I want this only to find out. Yeah, no, I didn't want that. And then it blows yeah. up in your face. Yeah, One totally. Sec. Wait, I gotta, oh, make sure, oh. I gotta make sure she's actually okay. And oh, that's necessary. But you literally just told me. Yeah, make sure she's okay. I'll be, I'll be back. 
All right, cool. Thanks, Madison. ESTJ, folks. That's an ESTJ with our ESFP friends. It's not fear of rejection, it's fear of not being good enough. It's fear of not being worthy enough. Let's not be projecting our own uh, functions. The security guards, uh, you want to look at that security guard, huh? That security guard, he's Soul Temple, probably an INFJ or an ISTJ, I can't tell. He's probably UDUF. But the girl standing next to him, the security guard girl next to him, she's an ESTP. So. Men seek unconditional love, Duggo, because they don't get unconditional love. And they feel unconditional love when they have high compatibility in their relationships with fellow men and with fellow women. So women, when they have camaraderie and they're all together and whatnot, you know, they oftentimes have the same sexual functions and the like. All right. Apparently Madison's going to come back. Who knows? Who knows? I seem to have extroverted thinking. Why? I'm a starter type. I just keep talking. Movement, progression. No, no, the cigar does not put me in INTJ shadow. It puts me in ISFJ subconscious. Yeah. Why do they want it or care? We just do. We just do. Because we know we don't have value and someone who adds value to us is really important. You know what I'm saying? It's like a really big deal. You two. Oh, yeah. The ESTJ went inside the bar and is talking to us at the bachelorette party. It's coming. Any hero is aware. It's coming. And they're all going to come out here one by one. Because, you know, Jungian analytical psychology, it's like a chick crack. And they can't resist, you know, that female intuition, you know, because they lack that, they have that uh, inferior judgment, but they have that superior perception. So Jungian analytical psychology, they really like that uh, it helps fuel their perception, right? I already did, I already typed Margot Ribey. Yeah. You want to be on the show? Yeah, let's see. Okay. How many people you got left? Right now, 125. 125? Yeah. That's pretty good. Hey, look, I'm famous. Hey, I'm famous. Yeah, you like being famous? Yeah. What are you talking about, dude? Put on the microphone, bro. Hell yeah, man. You did. You're ready, huh? I am ready. Hello, internet. Yeah. What's your name, bro? Coming to you live from Coeur d'Alene, Sherman, Idaho. Hell yeah. So what's, what's, uh, so what's your name? What do you do for a living? What, what are you what all about? What do I do for a living? What am yeah. I all about? I'm an artist. I've nice. I've been an artist my whole life. You've been an artist your whole life. What do you, you make? hear me? Like, uh, the... what do you make? Well, I went to school for classical performance. Yeah, so, I'm so a you, musician by you're trade. all about music. Awesome. Well, I'm not all about music because I've been making art before that. What kind of cigar is that? This is a uh, La Raña Azulejo. La or no, no, no. Actually, I'm sorry, that's wrong. This is a okay. La Roma de Cuba Mi Amor. La Roma de Cuba Mi Amor. Yeah. From where? I have no idea where this one comes from. But it loves Cuba. I guess. All right, well. Maybe it's just a Cuban label. Let's have, let's have it for the people. Let's see. Oh, I, 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 I no? don't do that. Oh, yeah. you don't do that? Sorry. I, I get really you don't uncomfortable. Share very easy. Stogie? I'm sorry, oh, I, I don't made you share uncomfortable. Well, oh, what's that's your all good, name? man. I'm Chase, like the bank. Chase, Pleasure to meet like you, sir. Bank. Good to meet you. Yeah. So this is what you do? It's what this I do. What yeah, 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 yeah. It's what I do. Can Just... you see what they're saying to you right yeah, now? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. T is axiomatic. What does that mean? Oh, uh, they're talking about cognitive functions. Cognitive functions. Yeah. So what's your show about? It's a uh, well, I'm a mind reader. That's what I do. Really? Yeah. Right? You're a mentalist. Yeah. Read my mind. Awesome. Cool. That's what I want to do. You help book. Let's do it right now. Yeah. Go. So Go. I need to know what you make though. Other than, so are you teaching oh, music no or more, no? No more information. I already gave you too much. You didn't tell me you're a mentalist, dude. <laughs> are you David Wayne? <laughs> Go. All right, all right. What am I thinking? You're all about. What am I, no, what am I thinking? No, no, I'll pull out your soul and expose you're, it to the no, audience. No, you can't pull my soul out of my body. Look at this. 
It's right here. Oh, dude. I can. It's right in here. Let's do it. Okay, try. All right. Go. So you're a person who's all about what he thinks all the time. Processing information, taking in like, I think this, I think that, okay. to the point where you actually can criticize people, but you are a walking problem solver. Okay. Always about problem solving. This, okay. And because of that, it inhibits your ability to actually ask for help because you want to be the helper. And the thing that makes you really the happiest is when people come up to you and ask you for help and ask you to help them solve their problems. It's okay. one of the things that makes you the happiest in life. You live in the moment consistently. You're aware of what everyone else is okay. doing. You're aware of the actions that they're taking. It actually helps make you an amazing teacher over time. In fact, that's the one thing in your life that's gonna make you the happiest is by teaching other people, especially when you're teaching your craft, like in music, yeah. to others over time. You're all about your personal freedom to the point where you have like this liquid luck about you. Kind of like, you know, you're like this little that. kid going across like- Felix Felicis. Yeah. You hear that? Ladies and gentlemen, this yeah. guy's pretty good. I'm a pretty lucky guy, actually. I believe that. You'd actually be really, really amazing at poker. Like seriously, some of the I best noticed. poker players in the world are just like you. It's incredible. Well, because you I can read poker people in the so well. For candy bars, though. Oh, so, awesome! I mean, I. Yeah, works out awesome. <laughs> so that's then, a different kind of game, brother. Yeah. I know. So then, uh, so you're all about what you want, and for some reason, like you may get yourself into trouble, but you're always able to get yourself out of trouble because yeah. you're very tactical I love like that. Into Super quick reaction speed. It's that's awesome. Good. Now your fear, your fear is. Oh, we're going. Yeah, there. we're oh, going. You got it. Okay. So your fear is not being liked by I others. I haven't let, I felt my soul leave my body, ladies and gentlemen, just to be clear. But he's pretty good. He's yeah, pretty so good read. you're afraid of people not liking you, not accepting you, not making you the top priority in your life, especially people that you're closest to. Okay. Because you want those people to value you and make you top priority, value you enough to come to you and ask you what you think so that you can solve their problems. Because let's be honest, you're the best problem solver around. You think more than anyone, and you literally can outthink anyone. However, people like you have this thing called Dunning-Kruger syndrome, okay. which means the smart people think they're dumb, and the dumb people well, think wait, they're smart. Well, wait, are you a psychologist? Yes, sir. With a doctorate? With a PhD? No. Your doctor of the mind? No, I learned okay. on the street okay. when I was homeless. Well, keep going. I just want to make sure before we diagnose, ladies and gentlemen. No, there's no I have not been here. officially diagnosed with Dunning-Kruger effect. Dunning-Kruger effect. Yes, I know. So, Thank you. so you're the smart person. Okay. Sometimes you think you're dumb. Why? Because you worry about not being credentialed enough, not having the training enough, Ooh. not having the uh, the degrees, not having all okay. of those uh, yeah. physical achievements, those physical accolades that oh, proves you're smart. Yeah, so yeah. you're like the scarecrow okay. from The Wizard of Oz. If I only had a brain, however, you're the smartest guy in the group. Let's be honest. And it happens consistently as you're solving those problems on a regular basis. Okay. Yeah. Now, so here's the thing. When you're teaching other people, it also this is what causes you to learn the most. Because sometimes you'll teach somebody a skill that you don't even know the skill, but the fact that you're doing it with them and you see them react to you in real time, you know how to adjust your teaching strategy in the moment, yeah. which causes you to learn the fastest can I, out of can all Can I interject of on your channel and speak for a second on what you just said? Sure. Because the most important, sure. I'm glad you picked up on that. Because yeah. the most important part of being an artist, and especially a musician that's an artist, is living music. Yes, sir. And is being in the moment. Yes, right? sir. Yes, sir. And so what you're talking about is important. And to me as an artist, what that represents is the power of the subconscious. Yes, sir. Please. That's exactly correct. Ladies and gentlemen. Because your subconscious is a mentor. Yeah. And a person's subconscious, when they access their subconscious energy, it makes them the happiest in life. So, the mo so you will reach the highest levels of your life when you are basically teaching your craft and teaching skills to other people. Yeah. Sure. Now, you're very critical towards your own experience. You're kind of typically uncomfortable all the time, but you go out of your way to make other people comfortable. When you see that yeah. they're comfortable, you, you become comfortable. comfortable. Yes, sir. Absolutely. We're on, we're I love on the that. air right now. Yes. We've yes. gained almost nine followers nice. since I came onto your channel. Yeah, because you're I dope. I won't even take a royalty either. But <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, staying in the moment and improvising and following your heart yes, leads sir. you to beautiful moments like this. Yes, sir. Now what you're unaware you're unaware of okay. long-term consequences. Ooh, okay. You'll make, so you'll see immediate reactions in the moment and you'll make yeah. decisions, but then you'll have blowback three weeks later that you just didn't see coming. It's like, oh my God, what the hell? Yeah, and what the most interesting part about you and what you do, which I respect and admire a lot, which is why I came over here to listen to you talk to these people, is that you have this like profound empathy 
or that, whatever word accurate. you want. Whatever Very accurate. Whatever word you want to use, if you allow me to be a mentalist for yeah, a moment. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. <laughs> but what we have to be aware of, ladies and gentlemen, and Chase included, is projection. Absolutely. Right? Oh, it's and a huge fact, problem. And the fact that we all put masks on, because as a performance artist, I know better than anyone that every time I leave my threshold, we all put on masks, right? Yep. And this gentleman is actually pretty smart because he did realize that I'm the scarecrow. Yep. The scarecrow. And I play the fool. <laughs> and it's for... But you're the smartest guy in the room, man. That's the reality. Well, thank you. Like, I appreciate seriously. that. Seriously. I think that's the time to sign off, right? No, no, no. We got a little yeah. bit more. Just a oh, little. we have a little bit. I mean, I, you know, talking about the control and all this stuff in the house, Sure. How much you know about me, which I appreciate actually. Sure. It's very insightful. Yeah. You should know well enough that I have the last word. Oh, certainly. Thank you very much. Enjoy yourself. Okay. ISTP, ladies and gentlemen. ISTP for that one. All right. Hey, you gonna be on the show? No. Come on. I'm 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 live right now. Yeah. All right. So someone in the stream, tell me where I left off, right? Or actually, I haven't even gotten to my main point yet. So let's discuss the main point. So something that I've actually uh, known about uh, camaraderie with women is that. What happens, what happens to women if they're around compatible women? What I've noticed is that women, because psychologically, they only have enough room in their life for one compatible relationship. If a woman is around a compatible woman, instead of a woman who is camaraderie, right? A compatible woman. What ends up happening is that one of the women selects the masculine role, and then the other one does the feminine role. And they end up actually submitting to the woman who has the masculine role. The thing is though, is it stresses out the woman who is in the masculine role and actually can destroy her femininity over time. So reality of the situation is, is that it can be a real toxic relationship to the women involved because they don't have men to lead them. Because like if you get a bunch of women when they're doing their stitch and bitch and they're being all camaraderie, leadership, they trade leadership amongst each other, right? But then if, as soon as you add a man into the room, the man automatically takes the position of leadership, right? That's what ends up happening by default. So, because eventually the women can't help themselves, they will compete with each other for his attention or for his desire, regardless, you know, depending on what his cognitive functions are, depending on what the cognitive functions of the women who are present actually. And this ends up happening consistently. So they end up taking that masculine role because of psychological compatibility. And I actually witnessed this happen recently between an ISFP woman and an ISFJ woman, right? I witnessed this. This kind of interesting situation because the ISFP took on the masculine role over the naturally feminine ISFJ woman and started telling the ISFJ woman what to do. Started obligating her, basically turned the ISFJ woman into her servant, basically, in this particular moment. When that really stressed out the ISFJ woman because it's like, hey, you know, that's not your place. You're not my man. You don't tell me what to do, right? So this is what ends up happening when there's psychological compatibility between women. This is why women need to be in uh, camaraderie relationships with each other instead of compatibility relationships with each other. Because women don't trust other women to lead them. Because where men lead, women follow basically. And women, because they're very pragmatic, whereas men collectively are affiliative and trying to do the right thing because that's the bro-ham, the bromance, you know, bros before hoes kind of uh, aspect, uh, you know, attitude that men have. Women are very cutthroat, they're very pragmatic. They will sell each other out for the sake of men in their lives, right? Because women don't trust other women to lead them. Women naturally don't trust other women to be in positions of leadership or to be in positions of decision making, right? 
decision making. And that's the thing. So when they have a compatibility situation, it creates a lot of conflict between women because all of a sudden, hey, I, I'm being compatible, you know, from this, uh, So, huh, I need to stop paying attention to the comments. I keep getting interrupted. So when women are in this situation where they have compatible with women with them, it creates conflict because they just don't respect each other to lead them, basically. Because women are naturally competitive with each other, they're naturally pragmatic because of their hypergamy. Their hypergamy being like, I'm trying to optimize with who I am with, like with my man from a compatible perspective. And it fires off their hypergamy in a negative way because it's with a fellow woman, right? And women already just naturally are looking for men to lead them. They're looking for someone to have the decision-making power. But when they see that come from another woman, they always compare themselves to other women. That's why, like, you know, women see life as this big pie, right? And men see life as this big pie. Men, they, they, they get a slice of this pie out of life, and it's like, okay, I got my slice. I'm going to do the best with what I got with this slice of pie. But then women, they get the slices of pie given to them, and then they look at me like, well, why do you get that slice? Why does your slice have, uh, have more apples in it than mine? Even though their, 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 uh, their slice has more cinnamon. And they start, comparing to one, they start comparing each other to each other, and it's like, well, why are you in charge? Why do you get to be in charge? And this happens every single time women are around compatible women. So to avoid that, they want to have shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder relationships, also known as camaraderie with other women. That's why women, when they have best friends, best girlfriends, basically, if you notice, when you type them, they all have the same sexual functions. So SE user women end up being best friends with fellow SE user women, right? That's how it works. But men, however, when they're best friends with fellow men, they have compatibility because men rely on compatibility because men are able to experience unconditional love through other men. Even to the point of being willing to lay down their lives for their fellow men. That's how that works. But typically, women aren't doing that. Women are too solipsistic. They're too, they have that feminine entitlement about them. And because they put self above tribe, they're constantly comparing each other to each other. Why do you get that slice? Who, made, who put you in charge, basically. So compatibility actually ends up creating a lot of conflict for women. So they end up avoiding those relationships. And then they save their compatibility basically for their relationships with men and not with their relationships with fellow women, which is advantageous. It's advantageous for men because, for example, if all of the women are camaraderie and you have a group of women coming up to a man, he could potentially have sex with each of them. So I'm an SI user, and if I'm around, you know, if I'm around an SE user girl who's like my girlfriend or whatever, and she has her best friend who is also an SE user, I could actually be sexual with both of them, and I could have both of them basically in that moment, and there'd be no risk of, you know, that's how it is. The thing is, and that also protects those men from those women cheating on him because those women are actually sexually compatible with him, right? That's what ends up happening. And this is one of the reasons why oftentimes, you know, women get mad at their best friend because they realize their best friend is sleeping with their man because they have that high camaraderie. And that high camaraderie actually opens up women to that risk where their girlfriends, their so-called best friends, will also end up sleeping with their man because their man naturally is sexually compatible with all of their friends, basically. Naturally sexually compatible with all of their friends, literally, right? This is why, this is why perception functions are saved for sexuality and emotional functions or judgment functions are saved for emotional, like, you know, uh, having like emotional affairs or emotional relationships, emotionally based relationships. So oftentimes, like you see an ESTJ girl and she, her best friend would be like an ESFJ woman, basically, or, um, or a, um, or an, or a, uh, an INTP. You know, they have that, you know, oh, I got that emotional connection with my fellow girl, but we're both SI users, and, you know, 
and then the SU user man in one of them's life could potentially sleep with both those women, basically, as a result. So that's why camaraderie is such a high priority, which is incompatibility, psychological incompatibility is such a high priority to women, ultimately. That's why it happens. That's why it's entirely necessary. And then men gain the benefit because it's like, you know, because imagine, imagine what would happen if women were compatible and they cared about compatibility with each other. And they were compatible with each other. A man would get with one of those girls, but then that girl could potentially, uh, you know, cheat on him with another man, basically. So to protect the race from that and to protect male polygyny, which is the uh, male sexual strategy, uh, many women to one man, basically, from that sexual strategy, whereas hypergamy is trying to get the absolute best possible men, the best possible man. Naturally, because women value camaraderie, that value in camaraderie actually ends up supporting the male sexual strategy of polygyny, ultimately. That's where it comes from. That's ultimately what it's all about. And a lot of people are entirely ignorant of this. Entirely ignorant of this concept. And it just, it just, it bothers me. It's like, why? Why are you so ignorant? Everyone is so quick to say, oh, Mr. C.S. Joseph, you're a misogynist. Oh, C.S. Joseph, you're, you're a sexist. I'm like, no. I'm just aware of how gender dynamics plays out from the perspective of biology, okay? Biology. Because women cannot handle compatible women. They just can't. They just can't. All right, so now I'm going to uh, booty, short, booty shorts girl in the back. She's direct initiating control for sure. She's an expert at sensor NI. So she is an ENTJ because she's definitely not an expert feeling uh, hero, that's for sure. She's an expert thinking hero. So that girl in the booty shorts, that's an ENTJ. There you go. All right, so. I'll now open up the stream for questions. Anyone got any questions? That's based on what I've been talking about this evening. Any questions? Oh, there's the ESTP security guard in the background. That's an ESTP right there. Funny. It's a really good cigar. Why do I look like Freddie Mercury? Well, show me it. Freddie Mercury is an ENTP. ENTPs look like fellow ENTPs. That's just how it works, right? Visual typing is looking at someone and being able to determine cognitive functions according to the type grid very quickly. In fact, I'm going to have my friend come into the camera right now. This is, this is Tom. He's been on the show before. Good dude. He's an ENTP. So let's take a look at this guy. Dude, you're always dripped out, like all the time. Oh, it's thanks. so good. Yeah, and you're, you, you do amazing with dark colors. So this is an example of an introverted sensor, okay? And this introverted sensor, introverted sensors like to wear dark clothing, sometimes plain clothing, right? So you can spot someone who is an SI user very quickly. In fact, there's a man coming up right now who's going to be walking by wearing a blue polo shirt. He's obviously an INTP, you know, for example. And as he walks by, you'll be able to see that, right? There he is, the blue polo shirt, right? He's an SI user. Very easy, right? Oh, there's the ENTJ again. Are people commenting on this live? Nice. Yeah. So, Tom, you're dressed like an SI user because you are an SI user. All about your comfort all the time, which is awesome. This guy, this guy is brilliant. This guy is like, this guy is the dopest. I Very really, brilliant. I really appreciate that. Yeah. This guy's dope as fuck, too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this guy has subtle control on narrative, subtle control like, um, like he, he like like most ENTPs, like every ENTP, he knows what mask to put on based on who he's with at any time and when to take on those masks and expose himself. It's like walking Beauty and the Beast, except you're the Beast. Yes. You know. But sometimes no, you know. No, you're very true. I often have had to wear masks in my life, and so I've mastered it quite a bit. Yeah. But 
um, I think there's a lot of nuance when it comes to revealing your, your yeah. true self. Yeah, so. exactly, exactly. A lot of nuance because people just can't handle us because we just make people naturally uncomfortable all the time. Yeah. We just do. That's and it truth. gets even worse when we tell them the truth on top of the fact that we've made them uncomfortable, but we do it because we care. Yeah. But we do it because they're trying to figure out which of them actually want us? Oh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? No, Who actually wants us? You're absolutely right. Yeah. The other day, my buddy, he was trying to give me some money that he owed me. Yeah. And he said, oh, I'm going to go grab it from ATM. I'll be with you here in a minute, but I'm hanging out with this girl right now. And I'm lurking around for 30, 45 minutes waiting to get my money. And she begins to think that I'm following her. And he's like, you're making her uncomfortable. You're creeping her out. And I'm like, yeah, well, that's not my problem, you know? Not, not <laughs> she, your problem. Actually, it's a demon, man. Yeah, I'm yeah. Like, she should stop being creeped out. And he's like, here, get away. <laughs> Give me the money you owe me, man. It's not hard. You're like, come on, man. Yeah, I totally get it. I totally get it. So yeah, when you're doing visual typing, folks, you can just look at people and you just know instantly what their perception functions are, right? You know, like, uh, like, so for example, the ENTJ in the background right here, she's very revealing and whatnot. Showing a lot of skin is indicative of an extroverted sensor. It is indicative of an extroverted sensor. But someone who's wearing lots of layers or someone who's lots of covered up, but then also like plain clothes that doesn't have a lot of overly, uh, you know, a lot of color to it, they're an introverted sensor. That's how it works. So this is one of the cues that you could follow just based on that. Hey, you want to be on the show? Uh, it's my it's my podcast. We're broadcasting live right now. You want on? Yeah, sure. All right, cool. Let's do this. Let's get you a microphone. Come on over. What's, what's, what's the podcast for? I'm a mind reader. Mind reader. Okay. Yeah, dope, huh? Here, so uh, just put on your lapel. Oh, like that. There we go. Yeah. So, uh, introduce yourself to the audience, good sir. What's your name? What are you all about? What do you do for a living? That, uh, that kind of stuff. I'm Gabe. I'm a mechanic. Awesome. That's, that's what I do for a living. I'm, uh, you know, just kind of living life. How'd you, how'd you get into uh, mechanics? Um, just an interest as a kid. You know, friends and all that. We all got into cars. And yeah. I, I, I wanted to make it a career. So you want to make it a career? Yeah. Yeah, what do you do for fun? Um, honestly, cars again. I, yeah, I, you race? I don't race, but I build my own cars. I, All right, you gotta tell me. You gotta tell me, like, like, what's your favorite? Like, what, like, seriously? Like, favorite what? Favorite in cars? Favorite thing to do cars? Like, oh, walk me man. through your whole process. Man, I just built a truck. It's you can't give me a favorite because I just built a truck, but then I also got a Honda Civic that's low. I got a. F1, that's low. Yeah, I got a Honda Civic that's low, and then I got a Ford F one fifty that's lifted. You. What kind of upgrades you got in these? Um, I. Uh, for the Honda Civic, it's just low. I just got coilovers on it, and then uh, pretty much just stock for the rest of it. I'm working on it. It's a kind of work in progress. And then the F-150, I had a, just an eBay lift kit. Just, just bought it off the online. eBay lift kit? Yeah, just yeah. bought it online. You got your own shop? Uh, kind of. I work in my own little garage. You own, like, so it's like, so you do this like where you work, or? Uh, I, I have two, uh, employment. So I'm an oil, I work at oil changers. So I just do oil. Yeah. And then my personal business is uh, if you need like a kind of sun tree, like sunshade mechanic, uh, I'm your guy. You call and type stuff. Yeah, the guy. Yeah. Wow. Just if you need something repaired, I'm pretty you know knowledgeable in that area. Yeah. That's so. awesome. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Like, what's what's the hardest job you've done? Oh, I've. You, I, I've taken out full engines and rebuilt full engines and put them back in. I've worked on semi trucks. I've worked on it all. So it's not real hardest. Kind of just uh, to your own personal like knowledge. So 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 what you do with cars is basically your art, basically. Yeah. That's your craft. I, I get my like emotions and expression is through like all these cars and vehicles that I work on. All right, cool. So. Are you ready for your mind to be read? Sure. All right, so I'm going to expose your soul to the audience. The go ahead, man. Awesome, I'm awesome. So you're Gabe, right? Yep. Awesome. So my friend Gabe here, he's all about what he values and how he feels. He makes decisions based on his mood and his principles and everything that he values on a regular basis. He also lives in the moment. He's all about personal expression. Everything he does is all about art because 
you care so much about legacy. You want your name on things. You want to be remembered, especially beyond when you died, because this is your purpose. Your purpose is your craft, because the one thing you want out of life the most is purpose, right? Yeah. And because of that, you have this mechanical mastery about you. You're all about, like, because you're aware of what everyone else is doing all the time, and you're like, I feel like I could do that better. And then you do, and you just implement things. That's why everything that you create, it ends up being slightly tweaked or slightly different every time because you're continuing to build your craft. Every single project you take on, it's always going to be improved over time. And you spend a lot of time researching all the different possibilities, All because from your perspective, literally anything is possible. So why not figure out, or why not spend the time trying to, okay, well, does this work out? Is this, is this valuable? Is this, uh, is this going to take us in the direction you want to go? You're all about your personal freedom. Sometimes that can get you in trouble though because you're not aware of long-term consequences. You're aware of immediate reactions in the moment, but sometimes you make a decision and it blows up in your face because, oh man, I didn't see that coming. Holy shit. You're a very independent person versus some people who are interdependent, always trying to do the right thing, but you don't care about doing the right thing. You care about doing what works, right? Yeah. And trying to figure out like what is the, what is the, because the, the, here's the thing. If you don't have freedom, you're going to be like super idle. You get mega lazy without freedom and not having that freedom of expression, that is what gets you so depressed the most in your life. Now your fear, your fear, you're afraid of what other people think of you. You don't want people to judge you, you don't want people to disrespect you, you don't want people to take choices away from you because your reputation is low. So you manage your reputation big time because you're aware of what other people are thinking. And sometimes you're afraid that your opinion is not valuable enough. When the reality of the situation is, is when it comes to your craft, you have the most valuable opinion because you're insanely diligent. You're like Kobe Bryant, but with cars, you know? Got that Mamba mentality. So you're able to be super mega diligent as a result of that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because right. when, you, when you're working on something, it's like you're in this flow state. You just can't let go of it. And then, so, and then as a result of that, your name gets out there, people start thinking highly of you, and you feel really good about yourself because people are thinking really highly of you. However, your worry, you worry that you're not caring enough towards others. You're worried that oftentimes other people will see you, they'll judge you, that you'll look like you're entitled, you look like you're selfish. So you go out of your way to be as caring as possible to other people whenever you can. Also... Can, can I ask a question real quick? Yes, sir. Are you bracing yourself like personality types? Because mm -hmm. I, I, uh, I looked at the chat for a second and someone said INFJ, which is yeah. very close. I disagree with that. Really? Yeah, yeah, the tests are bullshit. You think? What do you what, what what do you think that I would under those tests like? I'll tell you in a minute. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're leading up to that. Okay, cool. So you're very critical towards your own personal comfort. You're also critical towards what you've earned, and you don't like sharing what you've earned, what you've worked really hard with other people. Even though you're this person who gathers up treasure in your life, and so your deadly sin would be greed. You know, because you can be pretty greedy sometimes, gather up the treasure. But you got to figure out at some point in your life, who am I going to share my treasure with? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And uh, because of this, also. You may think you have a really good memory, but you're actually pretty forgetful. You leave stuff all behind, you know, oh crap, I gotta go back, oh this is bullshit, now I gotta drive across town because I left this tool over there. Those kinds of annoying things happen. You're entirely unaware of uh, consequences and things where they're going, and I totally get that. But the thing is, is that that's why you gotta get into the habit of asking other people like, hey, I kinda wanna do this, but would you do this? That way, you always are able to protect yourself from those long-term consequences that might blow up in your face. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then uh, the worst part about you is that no. you can be very critical towards other people. You usually keep your mouth shut because you, you pay attention to what's going on. But when you, but sometimes sharing exactly what you think, oh man, you can really know where to tear people down. You really know what buttons to push if necessary. Yeah. Why do you do that? Because when people take away your voice, when people do not give you the opportunity to hear your opinion, especially in areas where you know that you are an expert because that's what really hurts you. And it's like, why are you guys thinking about these things? Why are you guys being stupid? And then it's just gonna come out. It's like, hey, I've worked really hard to figure out, all, do all the research, to uh, understand how all these things fits together. Why the hell are you not giving me the respect to at least tell you my opinion first? Because then you just start making mistakes, which then is gonna create bad things for me to have to fix later. Why aren't you doing this, right? And because your deadly sin is greed, you're a very generous person. That's your living virtue. You know how to give gifts to other people and you spend a lot of time. People that you value the most, you give them the most amazing gifts over time and then they remember that and that way they stick around for you. It helps build loyalty in other people because they stick around. 
even though oftentimes you'd rather just be a loner. You need to, you know, have some solitude to regain energy because being out here is really super draining to you. You know what I am then. Right there, you know what I am. From that little sentence, I know you know what I am. Yes, sir. That's crazy. So your archetype is the ISFP, the oh. artist. Oh, maybe not then. Oh, seriously. Tests don't matter, man. Tests are bullshit. Do... Oh, you think? Oh, yeah. I mean, it might have changed. I've just been almost... Here, here, I'll give you a card. So it's, you been, can... it's been two years since I've taken a test. You know, personalities change as... Oh, uh, they don't change. Grow in their they grow. When people grow in their personality types, it often looks different. Really? Well, sure. If you excel in areas where you used to always fail, then you're, you're going to have a different outlook. You, you, were, you were close. Like you, like for the the whole situation you were explaining, oh, you were you were spot on, and maybe I've what you guys are saying is grown. Yeah. From the last time I've so take my test. Go my to udja.app, right? So so you're so you're all about what you want and your desire. That's known as fire, right? And you're all about aware of what other people are doing and showing people. You always like when new people come in your life, you're like, hey, I gotta show you this. Mm -hmm. Look at this thing I made. Look at that thing I made. And you're just very showy. That's called wind, also known as extroverted sensing. Fire is introverted intuition. So remember that when you're taking the test. Mm -hmm. And then also, you're all about what you value, your own personal principles. So, uh, and then also what everyone else is thinking, their thoughts. You're so aware of your reputation. You're so aware of your thoughts. And that's one of the reasons why you're generous to people because then they think highly of you and you gain status and reputation, which then gives you choices later. It actually helps you gain more freedom. Although sometimes you gotta be controlling. You gotta control other people because if you don't exert control, they're gonna create problems that are gonna take your freedom away later. Like they, they make mistakes on a car you're working on, for example, or they break something. And it's and now it, my... And then it's, then it's your responsibility. You hate that. You hate taking on that obligation that no, you, you didn't choose. You you guys, you did a really good job on that. Like, like really good. I mean, I should often take your test and see what I fall under with yours. But you you got that spot on, man. Right on, that's, man. that's crazy. Right on. That's uh, thanks for being on the show, yeah, man. Yeah, of course. Seriously, where, seriously. Where can I find you at? Just the... Yeah, yeah, you just find me here. You find me on YouTube. Just look up CS Joseph. That's all you got to do, man. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll give this back to you. Uh, thanks, man. And uh, It's good to meet you, Mr. Gay. Yeah. yeah, thanks for having me on. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like 5'11", and that guy is really fucking tall. Yeah, what's up, man? How much longer you got on the show? Probably a minute. Why is he dressed like the other two ENTPs? Because he's in his work clothing. That's why. Chase, fine, INTJ. INTJs are way too, uh, what do you call, paranoid to actually be on the show. What are you talking about, you know? Way too paranoid. So, yeah. All right, we got another crowd. Let's see if we have any more takers. How does affirmative girl look considering the pragmatic stuff? Whatever. Why is it that doing for a living important in typing a person? All right, Havoc, you'll find out if you get ego hacking by text. Go to egohackingbytext.com and get the course. Speaking of which, we actually have a sale right now. If you guys want to get like the best deal on coaching and also get access to our uh, paid content, go to offers.csjoseph.life forward slash essentials. Offers.csjoseph.life forward slash essentials. Get in on our summer deal right now while you can because it's not going to be up forever. Get on the summer deal. You get Acolyte. You get Journeyman. You also get a 30 minute session with me for type verification and your octogram. So we look at your nature, we look at your nurture. If we have time left in the session, I'll give you a little bit of life advice as well. Just check it out, it's amazing. So why is it so shunned in our society, immortal? It's because the powers that be don't want us to make babies, that's why. Overpopulation is the thing that they're scared of the most. So they set up society in such a way where polygyny is suppressed and uh, hypergamy is maximized in order to reduce the chances that babies are being born. So, would female relationships with same judgment functions work out? Uh, yeah, yeah, it does. Camaraderie is still king. Who can win in a fight between an ISTJ and INFP? Eh, it depends on the level of training, basically. It's visual typing on the membership, where can I study it? No, it is not on the me membership. Maybe I should make one on the membership. 
Maybe I should release a course on visual typing. What do you guys think? I probably will. That'd be cool. All right, might have some more takers here in a second. Make it on YouTube. <laughs> I gotta make money, man. Rick, I gotta make money. Seriously. But get on our email list. To get on our email list, all you gotta do is to go to csjosephvalley forward slash type grid or um, go to ucha.app, U-D-J-A dot A-P-P. -P. Take the test, we get your email. We'll email you uh, the courses when they come on sale. Will this society be an intuitive society in the future? No, it will not. How confident do you feel you can type someone with a severe learning disability? Very confident. Very confident. I could do that. More questions. More questions. INTJs are very similar to ISFPs. They have the same cognitive functions. Which one did you share? What? ISFP. The druid, the artist. You basically take the beauty in the world, like the beauty of cars, you extract it out and you share it with other people. The second letter, the, what is N? N, N, N? Well, it's intuitive, but it, oh yeah. ISFPs look hella intuitive because they're aware of anything as possible. They just don't know what specific things are more likely to happen. They just see it all. I was just curious because you seem like you seem very knowledgeable in it. And uh, I was talking to him about like, my personality test has been a long time ago, and yeah. like, I was like, the, the similarities between them are pretty closely. Yeah. Because mine was ENFP, but this was, again, when, when I was a teenager in high school. Yeah. And so I'm a completely different person from then. And so I feel like. It's just growth. It's exactly. just growth. As you, because like, because we have, you actually have four types in your head simultaneously. So you're ISFP, so you also have in your head the ENTJ. So it makes you look like, because it's an NTJ, like an INTJ, it makes you look like an so, INTJ. So could taking tests be like a false representation of what you are? It's a way of showing yes. what, what you're feeling in this moment, what character you're playing right now. But, but you know, tomorrow is a different day or the next hour is a different moment. Well, you have different archetypes in, in your head. So if you're like, for instance, if you're feeling really pissed off and angry because of circumstances in your life. <laughs> I, got, I got business cards, I hand them out. Whatever. So, how accurate am I with visual typing? Pretty accurate. I know, right? Everyone wants to be part of the INTJ Master Race. Hello, Pharrell Jackson. No, it was fairly accurate what you were saying. That's all I was saying. That's all I was saying. It's like, oh, it's supposed to be something else. Yeah, I'm supposed to be Yes, that's correct, Immortal. That is correct. It is a trend. I'm done with my cigar. They exhibit so much of their personality right off the bat. It's like, oh, I know. It's just like, like when girls walk by and they're like, oh, what are you? They're like, what are you doing? Can I be on the show? And he's like, oh, you want to be He's like, oh, you want to be on the show? That's like the part of your personality type, right? Safe colors, yeah, exactly. SI is safe colors. Well done. Whereas some people are a little more paranoid and they're like, oh, no, I don't want to do that. What type of sailor? ENTP. Yeah. Hey, the audience says they love you and they think you're cute. Thanks. Thanks, y'all. Fib does not stink. Fib is epic. Legendary man. It's getting pretty late, folks. Probably gonna have to shut down the stream and close up shop for the evening. A show. You want to be on it? I want to. Yeah, let's be on the show. Cool. <laughs> My show, my podcast. Oh, you have a podcast? Yeah. I can't. Yeah. Huh? You just wear the microphone, introduce yourself to the audience, and I'll do a mind reading. Okay. 
Go, come on up. Yeah. All right, so let's put this on. On your, yeah. Oh, this is hard to put on. Hey, you got it. You got it, Gunner. All right. All right, all right. So introduce yourself to the audience. Hi, my name is Gunner Julio. Gunner, from Florida, nice. Idaho. Nice, epic. Yeah. What do you do for a living? Well, I'm in college. Oh, you're in college. What are you studying? Uh, business. What kind of business? Uh, business management. Business management. Awesome. Yep. Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Let's do your reading. Are you guys ready? You guys ready for this guy's reading? Let's do this. Let's do this. All right. So. You're a guy who lives in the moment constantly, always aware of what everyone else is doing all the time, also what they've done. You look at a person, you kind of get a guess like, oh yeah, I kind of know what they've done. I kind of know what they're all about. You're all about what you think. You only care about the facts, the true, false, whatnot. And this actually can make you very critical and maybe even harsh to other people in your life. But you do it because you care and no one cares more than you do because at the end of the day, you're actually trying to show them that how they could be a better person, how to have better character, and that's why you criticize other people, even though most people just treat you like you're some kind of fucking dick, when the reality of the situation is, you're actually doing it because you care. Number one way to piss you off is go after your fear, because you're afraid of your freedom of choice being taken away, so taking away your choice, you get super ragey, super angry when that happens, because you don't like it when your freedom of choice is taken away. It also pisses you off when you're left out of things, because you have fear of missing out, constantly. FOMO is literally how you live your life. Got to watch out for that. Always got to be in the moment all the time. Always got to be including all the activities because it's like, oh, you're leaving me out? Well, then fuck you. Because you're this guy who wants to be memorable and give, and you give to other people because you're so memorable, right? And it's like, hey, if I'm doing these things for you, call me. Include me in everything. Don't leave me out. Holy shit. Because here's the thing. You got to roll with your wolf pack, man, because your wolf pack is everything to you all the time because you're the alpha male of the group. Always. Wow. There you go. That was Why was that so no, no, brutally no, 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 honest? When you look at me and say, Dad, because everyone thinks you're a dick. That's literally that, that is, <laughs> Why was that so yeah, brutally oh, honest? Hey, we're not done. We're not done. We're not done. Holy crap. What is going on? So, that was so crazy. Here's where your worry is. You worry, you get really nostalgic. You worry about the good times will end one day. And that's why you're constantly always trying to get to the next thing on a regular basis. You worry about having to share things with other people that you've earned, that you've worked really hard for on a consistent basis. You're very critical towards other people's thinking, which inhibits your ability to listen to people. And that also inhibits your ability to ask for help because you see yourself as the problem solver and not the person who likes to impose your problems on other people because you don't want to be a burden. Right? Yes. Wow. <laughs> then on top of that, you're entirely unaware with how you feel because you don't give a flying fuck about how you feel. You care about the facts, all about what the true false is. It doesn't matter. Worst part about you, you have a tendency to take away other people's choices and other people's freedom, but only when your freedom is threatened because it's like, hey, if I don't get a choice, no one gets a choice. Yeah. The thing you care about the most in life is bonds, connection, intimacy with other people. You want to have two-way street relationships, but you have a lot of people in your life who are just attachments, where they're drains. It's one-way street relations. They're just constantly taken from you, and it really bothers the shit out of you when they do that. And you're trying to cultivate that bond, cultivate that connection, a two-way street relationship. It's one thing that you care about the most. Your deadly sin is lust, also known as jealousy. You're an extremely jealous person, wanting what other people have on a regular basis. However, your living virtue is chastity, right? Chastity means doing the best with what you have because it's what you have, optimizing what you already have. And you can help other people optimize what they already have and help them not be so lustful, help them not be so jealous, right? Yeah, and then on top of that, you have a tendency of idealizing other people, kind of seeing other people as like maybe a little too perfect sometimes, which can bite in the butt. But you also objectify other people, but you also like it when other people objectify you because that means you are a top performer, that you're the one that can outperform everybody because that is your intrinsic value to other people. You also like having justification in life because you see things from this perspective. Who can get away with what when? Which rules can be broken? Why do we even have the fucking rules? Let's test out this rule. Let's see if it's actually important. Let's see if this rule actually has to be here. Let's break it and see what happens. Does this rule need, really need to be here? You're hyper independent as a result. Always focus on what you want, even though you don't actually sometimes know what you want because sometimes when you make a decision, you realize all the options that you have in front of you, those doors close. You have to have the faith that after you make a decision, that more doors will open for you after that decision. So you're decision hopping. So oftentimes you think that you will always have maximum freedom if you're the top performer, but that's not actually true. Giving other people choices, 
freeing other people is actually what gives you the most freedom and you have to learn that within your life. It's one of the biggest things. So the more options that you give other people over time, and it's really hard for you to do that because it's like if I give you options, you're going to make choices, and all of a sudden I'm going to be fucking obligated because you're not aware of what that's going to do. Go into that. And then you're going to get stuck with obligations because you don't want to get saddled with bullshit. You're constantly trying to unobligate yourself and unobligate your friends because your friends, when they have obligations, they're asking you for help, and you're the helper, right? You're the problem solver, but then it brings you down, and you don't want to be brought down in the process. So you tell them, hey, you shouldn't do that. You really you should. should you really shouldn't do that. Even to the point where you got to be forceful or even criticize them because stop bringing me down. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Wow. That is fucking crazy. That was really accurate. Why would? Why was gentlemen. that too accurate? I'm sorry for my language. No, no. We we cuss on this on the show all the time. Okay. What's your name? Chase. Chase. I'm Gunner. Gunner. What you're at? Yeah. Hey, I'll give you a card. I got you. Okay. Holy shit. What was that? <laughs> Why did he just call me out like that? Oh, sorry. Oh, thanks. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Holy is this your girlfriend? Yep, this is my girlfriend. All right, let's do her. Okay. And then I'll explain your relationship. Okay. Oh, good. You want me to put this on? All right, introduce yourself to the audience. Hello, my name's Maddie Quigley. Yeah, what, what, what do you do for a living? What's your thing? What well, do you do for fun? We're just in college right now. Just in college? So what are you studying? I'm studying health sciences with the pre med track. Pre med, huh? Yeah. yeah, what got you into So you're, so you're going to be like a doctor or something yeah, like that? I want to be a surgeon. A surgeon? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, like, what, what is that all about? Like, what got you into that? What? I don't know. I've always just been really interested in healthcare and. You know, I've kind of been to the doctors a lot, seen it a lot firsthand, and I don't know, everything with like the body and everything, it just amazes me. I think it's so cool. Why is that? I don't know. I just think it's really fascinating. I really like learning things, and I think like, especially the body, it's like you can just learn about it basically forever. So what's your opinion about uh, the, the pharmaceutical establishment and all their bullshit rules potentially inhibiting doctors from actually doing real good? What's your opinion on that? Yeah, well, honestly, I don't really know a lot about that, but I don't know. I think Is that, that something you've experienced? No. In your life? No. No, but I think that some of like the big main people who call all the shots can be a little off sometimes. Really? Yeah. Okay, fair enough. All right. All right, so uh, are, we, are we ready? Uh, we ready for uh, her reading? All right, cool. So you are all about your comfort, and you do what you should, not necessarily what you want. You like being told what to do, <laughs> which is great because he loves telling you what to do, so it works out awesome. You're also aware of what everyone else is thinking. You take great care for your status and your reputation. It means everything to you. So when you have high status, high reputation for others, because that means it's like, hey, you know, I'm the woman for the job. I absolutely could take on that role, which is awesome. <laughs> yeah, because you love you some role play, and he loves some role play too, especially in the bedroom. You know what I'm saying? Gotta, lo gotta love that role play shit, because he hella gets off on that role play, because you're the woman for the job, able to take on any role no matter what. You know what I'm saying? Now, you care about how you feel. You make decisions based on your mood on a regular basis, weighing everything out, valuing everything. This guy, he doesn't know how he feels, so he always calling you and be like, hey, how do you feel about this? How do you feel about this? But you're always going to him and be like, hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about this all the time? You're looking to him for true, false, facts, judgment. He's coming to you for the good, bad. Is this a good decision for me to make? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now you're afraid. You're afraid of being unwanted. You're afraid of not being chosen. You're afraid that he won't want you anymore. And it's constantly plaguing you in the back of your mind. And you worry, you worry about your personal performance, that your performance is not well. You're worried that you're making other people uncomfortable, worried that you're making him uncomfortable. And that's why, because you know what makes you comfortable, so you try to share the things that make you comfortable with him. And because when he sees that you're comfortable, he becomes comfortable, because you're comfortable. Yeah. When you feel safe, he feels safe. And that's how that, that's not part of this interaction within your guys' relationship, you know what I'm saying? And then beyond that, you're very critical towards your own thinking. Oftentimes, when you, especially when you're younger, you actually may have thought that you were stupid because you were constantly critical towards your own thinking. That's why you gotta ask other people what they think all the time to confirm that your beliefs are actually in line with the facts. But he will criticize you and your beliefs on a consistent basis to make sure that your beliefs always line up with the facts every single time, which is one of his value adds to the relationship, right? Also, you're a walking excuse engine, making excuses for anything. <laughs> 
you spend a lot of excuses that you make on yourself, but what you're supposed to do is excuse other people for their actions. Finding justification for other people, absolving them of wrongdoing, right? This gentleman needs somebody in his life who's always going to stick around for him no matter what. That's everything to him. To the point where he can like call you anytime or any of his, any of his affiliates, any of his friends, they'll drop everything for him. And you're literally that person who would do that because you have that hyper loyalty complex as a result, right? Now what you're unaware is social interaction, unaware of social norms and social rules. And this guy helps you navigate all things social and how to behave around friends and how to behave around people because you're not really a people person. You're very systematic. You follow a procedure and a process, always making a proposal of some kind, but you're just not really that in tune of being a people person. He is a people person, and that's what he brings, and he helps you understand people over time, and that's one of his value adds to you, specifically. The worst thing about you, you're very risk averse. You always have a hard time taking risks. You always gotta play it safe all the time. The thing is, is that you wanna make yourself the most desirable person out there, and you think that if you're the strongest and you, are, and you can endure and you can stick around, you'd be the last woman standing, that's not actually what makes you desirable. Your ability to actually take risks is what actually makes you desirable. So you gotta learn how to do that. And sometimes he, he, has, he, he takes lots of risks. Sometimes he doesn't know if a risk is actually what he should be doing at that particular moment or if that's what he wants to do. So you encourage him. And you are a huge source of encouragement to this man. So you, he takes away your fear because he always wants you. And you take away his fear because you're constantly encouraging him and also giving him justification or whatever excuse that he needs to make whatever decision he needs to make to get through and continue to ha keep the good times flowing all the time. Because he's not necessarily aware of what he can get away with. You are aware of what he can get away with. And you give that to him and it really helps him have more freedom. You give him maximum freedom. You are always giving him choices. Because you're just like, okay, whatever you want, Gunner. It's cool, <laughs> whatever you want, whatever you want. And he's like, oh, thank God, thank God. Because <laughs> what I want, it matters yeah. <laughs> for once, you know. Yeah. So your deadly sin, though, is wrath, and you have an anger issue. Got to watch out for that. <laughs> Be careful. You get super mega angry sometimes, especially when you're in really bad mood. Yeah. But it, it's fleeting. <laughs> sometimes it's there, but then it goes away. Or he says, sorry, apologize. Who cares? Let's move on to the next thing. Yeah. You don't let it linger. And he loves that about you, that you don't let that linger. Yeah. You guys have what's called a golden pair, highest possible compatibility, which means the grass will not be greener with anyone else. <laughs> That's good to hear. <laughs> Why was that brutally true? I know. <laughs> Just like yours. I know. Yeah. ISTJ. That was good. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that, that was, was fun. Awesome. Yeah, that was really cool. Thank you. You're most welcome. Can I have my microphone back? Yep. Thanks. <laughs> Enjoy yourselves. Thanks. Yeah. All right, folks, thanks for watching and listening. Like and subscribe. Offers.csjoseph.life forward slash essentials. You guys have a good night. Later.